Hello, this is a video about something called linearizing data. There are lots of different ways we can linearize data, and we're going to look at some of the main ways. The thing to know about linearizing data is it's important for two reasons. You'll see it on some IB paper 2 exam questions, and you'll also see it as something you have to do in your lab reports. So we all know that if we have two quantities that are proportional to each other, then when we plot one against the other, it forms a straight line on a graph that passes through the origin. What does that mean? Well, let's take force and acceleration as, a, as an example. Imagine we do an experiment where we take an object, like a ball, and it has a fixed mass, and we accelerate the object at a variety of pre-selected values. So for each pre-selected acceleration that we give the ball, we measure the resulting force on the ball. We throw a, this data that we collect into a graph. We put the f values onto the y-axis and the acceleration values onto the x-axis. And because f and a are proportional, and we know they're proportional thanks to Newton's second law, right there, because they're proportional, we expect those data points to form a straight line passing through the origin. And this is true. We expect this because any two things that are proportional form a straight line pass passing through the origin when graphed. So here's what the graph would look like. A straight line passing through the origin. That's what the data points form. Force measured in newtons on the y and acceleration measured in meters per second squared. So that's a pretty easy example. There is nothing we have to do because the data is already linear. But what if we have something like this? I, the current, and R, resistance, could be related in this way. So now I is proportional to the inverse of R, right? And we call that an inverse proportionality. If we were to try and make a graph of i against r, that definitely should not form a straight line. Things form a straight line when they're proportional to each other. And we know that i is not proportional to r, because i is proportional to 1 over r. So if this isn't true, then we're not going to get a straight line. What do we get? We get something that's curved, like this. So the data curves down. That's what we get for an inverse relationship. And any inverse proportionality is going to look generally like this graph. So how could we take this data and form a straight line? Well, we said already that i is proportional to 1 over r. And we've also said that any, th any two things that are proportional make a straight line when plotted. So i and 1 over r are proportional, which means we expect to get a straight line if we plot i against 1 over r. In other words, every one of these x values every one of these x values that the data points have we're going to take the inverse of and we're going to use that new value as the x value okay so here's what this looks like you do this and you get a straight line it's almost like magic there it is so now we're graphing i against 1 over r y quantity against x quantity And this is generally how we linearize anything that is inversely proportional. Right? That's the rule. What if we have two quantities that are related in this way? So let's say we have kinetic energy and velocity. Right? And the relationship is kinetic energy is proportional to velocity squared. Or equivalently, qu equivalently we could write it this way. We call this a square relation, 
and it looks like this. If we plot KE against V, we get this upward sloping curve. Right? And that's pretty good. It conforms with what we expect. And what we expect is to not get a straight line because KE and V are not proportional. They're not proportional. So how could we take this data and form a straight line? What could we plot to get a straight line? Well, KE, kinetic energy, is proportional to V squared. So if we plot KE against V squared, then because those two things are proportional, that'll form a straight line. So here's what we see when we plot KE versus V squared. We see a straight line, just like, it's almost like magic. So what if we have a different relationship? Right. We've seen inverse, we've seen a square relationship, but what if we have something with a square root where D is proportional to the square root of A? So for example, Let's say the diameter of some funny shaped circle oval has a diameter D and an area A. And we see that D is proportional to the square root of A, or D squared is proportional to A. We call it a square root relation. And it looks like this. Instead of sloping up, it curves down like that. That's what we get when we plot D against A. And this is what we would expect, because we expect not to get a straight line, like I said before, because D and A are not proportional. So what do we have to plot to get a straight line? D against square root of A, because that's what's proportional. So if we do that, D versus A to the 1 half, here's what the data looks like nice straight line passing through the origin. And just like the other examples we've seen, this is how you linearize any square root relation. The reason we do this, create these linear graphs or linearized graphs, is so that we can develop an equation which relates the x and y quantities. Now we've just learned how to linearize our data, how to plot some modified data that forms a straight line. Now what we're going to look at is how to use those linearized graphs to develop an equation that relates the x and y quantities. And it's really easy. It's really straightforward. Right. So here's what we do. Here's the next step that we follow. Once we have our linearized graph, we draw the best fit line onto the graph. Then you find its slope, and you find the best fit line's y-intercept. Now we know that any straight line, including these straight best fit lines, are defined by the equation y equals mx plus b. So that equation defines every best fit line that we draw onto a linearized graph. We're going to use that equation to build our mathematical model relating the y and x quantities. So what you do is you plug in for y the y quantity, right? Maybe it's kinetic energy. Maybe it's I, current. For x, you plug in the x quantity from the linearized graph. That might be acceleration, or v squared, or 1 over resistance. You plug into m the value that you obtain when you calculate the slope, and you have to include units. And for b, you plug in the y-intercept that you found. So we're going to do this quickly for the examples we've looked at already. Inverse proportionality looks like that. This is true for any inverse proportionality, but we're looking at an example that involves current, i, and resistance, r. If we linearize our data by plotting 1 over r on the uh, x-axis, it looks like this. Then we add a best fit line. Let's use a computer to do this for the sake of uh, time. So there's our best fit line. There's the equation. 
we see that m, the slope, is 4. Its units are the y units over the x units. And there's an error right here. y units over x units should be amps over ohms to the negative 1. There's a negative 1 missing. And amps over ohms to the negative 1 is equal to a volt. So here's our equation that we're going to build from. We're going to plug in for y, x, m, and b. So for y, we plug in i current. For x, we plug in the x quantity, 1 over r. For b, we plug in 0, because the, the y-intercept is 0. And for m, we plug in 4, and we have to include units of volts. We can get rid of the plus 0, and there is our model. Let's do this again for the square relation. Kinetic energy against V looked like this, upward sloping. This is the graph we see for anything that has a square relation, where one variable is proportional to the square of the x variable. So if we linearize, linearize our, data, our data, and instead of putting V down on the x-axis, we put V squared, it looks like this. We add a best fit line, find the equation, and we get that. We see that M has a value of 2.3, and its units are the Y units divided by the X units. That's joules over meters squared per second squared. And if you work it out, you see that that's equal to a kilogram. So there's our equation that defines this line. We're going to plug in y is going to be replaced with ke, x is replaced with v squared, m, b is going to be 0, m is 2.3 kilograms. We can get rid of the, two point, the plus 0, and there's the equation defining our line. And what this equation does is it models the y and x variables, or quantities. So we've developed a, a relationship, a mathematical relationship, between the y and x quantities. For square root relation, it looks like this. We linearize our data by taking the square root of the x values, putting the square root of a on the x-axis, and it looks like this. Add a best fit line, and we see that the slope is 5.1, its units are meters over meters, which means it's dimensionless. There are no units for this particular slope. There's our equation defining the best fit line that the data follows. We plug in. Y becomes D. X becomes the square root of A. B again is 0. And M, the slope, is 5.1 with no units. We can get rid of the plus zero, and that right there is our model. It's the equation that relates the y and x quantities. Right? This could be the dependent variable, and this could be the independent variable. So we're going to look at a really quick example. Right? Let's say that Jane performs an experiment where she drops a bouncy ball from 10 meters and measures the height of its sixth rebound on the sixth bounce back up. How high does it go? She investigates the ball's initial velocity, and she looks at how that initial velocity affects the sixth rebound height. So she uses a range of initial velocities when launching the ball, and she measures those, let's say, with photo gates, and she records the resulting height of the sixth rebound. Her data is this. She thinks, hey, that looks kind of like a square relation because this is curving upward. So maybe h, the sixth bounce height, maybe it's proportional to the square of vi. To test that hypothesis, she plots h against vi squared, expecting to see a straight line. And there it is, a straight line. So that straight line passing through the origin is evidence that supports her hypothesis.
any two quantities.